Hello, welcome to another episode of The High Ground, powered by Premier Companies. Ryan, how are you today? Absolutely wonderful. Every day we are absolutely wonderful, yep. the two of us. That is true. We've got our returning and special guest on with us today, Aaron Bledsoe. But before we get him going again with the, the grain markets, we've got the question of the day to get through, Aaron. And uh, Sounds good. Are you ready for this one? Yeah. What yeah. is on your bucket list? Uh, that you can get accomplished uh, probably in the next 10 years or so? Uh, it's always been at the top of my bucket list to go to New Zealand on a red stag hunt. So I think I might be able to pull that off in the next 10 years. I'm hoping. Wow. I'm hoping so. Interesting. You of course, I'm going to take my wife and daughter. So, I mean. <laughs> you shot every Bambi in North America. And now you've got to go uh, moving pick, on, move on to another <laughs> continent. I wish I could say that. No, I haven't shot every Bambi. And I mean, <laughs> but I, a red stag, red stag. Yeah. This isn't yeah, some mythical creature or something, is it? No, no. They, they, they call it the King's deer. It came from uh, England huh. and like Europe. So, yep. Kind of like the American elk, just a little different. Okay. Well, a guy gets his own facility, and all of a sudden, he's killing the king stuff. Ooh. You know, you see how it is. <laughs> yes. The commoners. <laughs> wow. The commoners can wow. chase whitetail, but I'm going after the king's deer. Wow. So, yeah. Ryan? Yeah, I know. Oh, so you want my mirror mortal uh, yes. bucket list item? So, <laughs> so, no, it's sort of down the same uh, the same path. I would love to, to own another bass boat, and I would love to go fish. Lake Fork and Gunnersville, and I would love to just go bass fish all of those big lakes that uh, uh, that you see the tournaments held on, and where they come at these huge limits, and people say, "Oh, you go on the right day, you'll get sick of catching seven pound bass." Huh. And I'd I'd love to try that sometime. So I don't know that I can knock it off within the next decade, but uh, we'll see. But that I'd love to go fish a lot of those, a lot of those just famous bodies of water. This, they have the power poles on the back yep. and yeah, yep, just flip, just flip into lily pads and just go, well, that, I think I just broke off an eight pounder. No, no, that was a 10 <laughs> and know that yeah, people would need to believe that they don't believe that. Yeah. The <laughs> so they are here, but, uh, yeah, that, I think that's one thing I'd love to do. And if, uh, Travis and EJ and, and Carla want to go and, and be a part of it too, that'd be fine as well. But for sure, I'd love, I'd love to do that. That'd be so, cool. That would be yeah. neat. And you're going to take your family on a, stag red stag hunt aaron is that right well i want to take him with me my wife probably won't go hunting with that's me the now consolation. my daughter, get the nice lodge she's yeah. not yeah. gonna care yeah mm. exactly exactly now my daughter she well she's got a taste for it she wants she wants to see things hit the dirt so she she might <laughs> trace around that's with me, funny but, yeah we're going to find out what kind of wow. the diversity of our listeners after yeah. that comment. Yeah, we'll see the comment <laughs> section. See the comment section light up now. <laughs> All those non-ag people that we're reaching out to. Yeah, what are we saying? Yeah. What he said? Probably ought to cut that. Cut oh, that part shoot. out. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right up there with our most uh, or, or should be edited guests. Yes. After the last time you're on, you've noticed it's been quite a gap since the last time you're on here after your last performance. So, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Yeah, angry the, beavers. The beavers. I still want to know if they saw an uptick in that. I I think they did. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't, I'd rather not revisit it. <laughs> so, what are you going to do on your bucket list? You know, uh, this is probably a backhoe bucket. I'm guessing, right? It's uh, something to do with that. I, I actually, figured. I had I was thinking about this question, and I've always wanted to go to Israel, but that doesn't seem very practical. Uh, probably not in the near term, anyway. But I was down at Jacoby's for their open house, and they have a new Kubota excavator that is uh, kind of a mid-size and probably weighs about 18,000, 19,000 pounds, and that is beautiful. I would love to own one of them. And uh, and drive it to Israel? Were those no, unrelated? Those, those were unrelated. unrelated. Oh, okay. <laughs> I might build a wall. I don't know. I could... But uh, that is a beautiful machine, and I think that would be uh, – my wife has already said I can get a new dump truck. Uh, my old dump truck is pretty rough. I'm the only one that can drive it at this point. Unbelievable. And uh, – <laughs> but uh, – And she fixes your breakfast every morning. She didn't this morning. This She's got the flu again, I think. 
She's pretty puny. So you gave her a pass then? Nice. You're going to send love anyway, though, right? I right? told her it was awful lonely by myself this morning up in the dark moving around the house. I didn't get my oats. Oh, But wow. no, I can see myself in that new excavator. Man, that'd be nice. Brand new. That new equipment smell. <laughs> Man. Well, you love it, though, else, don't you? you could take I do. It. Do what? I mean, you... I mean, you could take the excavator to Israel to help clean up when that when that starts. I mean, yeah, yeah I think I'd want some pretty thick glass in that excavator. Those people are, it's they're it's pretty rough. They're there. upset about a lot of stuff. That's it's been not going Washington on. County. That's been going on for a while. A while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not yeah. yeah, about <laughs> yeah. You know, just a little over two thousand years, probably. That's yeah. Been, yep. <laughs> you think. yeah, that's a statement. <laughs> that's been going on. Yeah, wow. I, you can't, I hope they caught the look on my face when you said that. Uh, boy, well, that's one way to put it. Yeah, it sure has. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Aaron, that's not what we brought you on here to talk about. So <laughs> So, so tell us a little bit about uh, the levels of corn and soybean markets. Where, where are they today? And uh, we can timestamp this as the very first day of March after the second last day of February in 2024. Bonus so. day. <laughs> yep. Um, today, you know, nearby corn, uh, everyone's pretty well trading the May futures now because we are into the first part of March. Everyone's made that roll. Uh, corn's trading around that 425 mark. Uh, beans would be trading around 11.45 for the nearby futures. Uh, you start talking new crop, which is what I'm more looking at. Um, old crop's kind of a sad story. New crop, you know, there's still opportunities there. We're at the 4.59 mark for D's corn and 11.33 for November beans. So, so how? How? Which? We, go ahead, Aaron. Oh, I was just going to say that's the beginning of this month, March 1st. March is a big month. We've got the normal um, USDA report coming up, and then we'll have the prospective planning report at the end of this month, and that'll be a big one. And this may just be too simplistic, a supply and demand question, but how do we get in this situation? What? How do we get here? I mean, if we set road clock back six or seven months, I mean, this is not what we're, we thought we'd be, but uh, how do we get here? Yeah, so we kind of, I guess to roll back the clock a little bit, we got to where we were with really high prices and good production for the U.S. I mean, if you, especially the Corn Belt side, you know, there there were those areas that that struggled out yeah. west with drought. I mean, it, it has been bad for some people. We have been very blessed in our area where we've been able to last several years have good production and some historically extremely good prices i mean we, we just don't typically see corn six seven eight dollars i mean though that is rare 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 territory 15 16 dollar beans that's very rare too so to turn the clock back to those times we were kind of playing off of a lot of geopolitical events um russia invading ukraine that's been two years now so that was a big deal um that initially sent the market into a frenzy even before then though south america was having Um, some difficult crops down there. And, you know, we came out of COVID, everybody started rolling, China's economy kept on ticking and really rolling. So they needed beans when South America was having a struggle. Everything kind of lined up for Mm -hmm. U.S. to see some really good prices. Now we get to, in the last couple of months, you know, we've been saying for a while, high prices fix high prices, low prices fix low prices. High prices finally fixed it. Um, U.S. had a great yield on corn. Uh, we had quite a few acres on corn. Beans didn't have as many acres as usual, but they, uh, but again, they had a pretty good yield. And we're seeing some of these um, unrest and you know, like Chinese economy start to waver a little bit uh, with South America production being really good. We're seeing all these factors kind of come together to where. We've just started to build up that surplus again. So it, it gets back to fundamentals. I mean, we, we've got a bunch of these geopolitical things going on, and and there's always the you know the, the chance of a supply issue coming up for stuff that's getting ready to be put in the ground for us or for the second crop in South America. But that's kind of how we got here. Is that we had really good production here or good production um, for the nation for 
quite a while now, for several years, while some of the rest of the earth didn't have the best. And now they're starting to have their normal or better crops again. And just supply chains are just starting to really feel the pinch of, man, there's just a lot out there. So just like things lined up to put us in a good positive position, things lined up to put the downward pressure on the market. It did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were, we were experiencing some historical type levels I mean, for quite a while. And at, at some point, um, something would change for us to either maintain that level, you know, something in the normal uh, supply and demand channel would have to change to allow us to stay in those areas, or we were going to start dialing it back. And right now we've dialed it back. So, so what does it look like locally? I mean, what are you seeing around your facility as far as how people are handling these bushels? Because we know we moved a lot in season just to stay running because there was such a such a high level of yield uh, in our local uh, trade territory. Uh, but we know they took a bunch home too, those that could. What uh, mm-hmm. What's happening with those bushels today? Yeah, I mean, you, you hit on it in December – uh, the USDA came out and said, you know, on-farm stocks were 16% higher than they were last year, you know, the previous year for corn. We had phenomenal yields. And usually what you see in the grain industry is January, kind of the market gets flooded again. It's a new fiscal year for a lot of places. Uh, they start un- unloading stuff because they can handle the cash for tax purposes now. And, and this year, it kind of got pushed. Um, guys didn't like the price. And... So they waited, waited, waited. Well, with these interest rates, um, at some point, spring gets closer and guys have to let go of stuff. Or they put it on basis contracts um, because the last couple of years, basis contracts have worked pretty well rolling with an inverted market. We're in a carry market now, and we got close to that March expiration date in February, and and guys started unloading stuff on what they either had to um, to get the money that they needed or – they didn't want to take that roll to the May futures and the basis gets worse on them. So they, they unloaded on it. And that's kind of what, that's kind of what drove the market down in February. Pretty rough. Uh, there was a lot of pressure on it. Just bushels finally started to flow. As far as stuff coming off the farm right now, um, it slowed up a little bit. Um, we saw a pretty good push. We basically filled back up again in February this time. And it's a little bit of a somber, um, conversation out there with, with guys um, they're, they're looking for a direction of where it's going to go and th- there's just not uh, unfortunately just not a lot of positive uh, news to drive us higher right now so we're kind of back to hoping for a supply issue uh, to, to, to do anything and, and and that's a very uh, tricky card to be playing with well that's um before we get to the question about <laughs> What do we need to draw the inside straight to? What I mean, what um, do you think that the on-farm stories locally uh, is that still higher? You said sixteen percent from the report. Um, what do you think that looks like locally compared to an average? I guess I would say, judging it based off of my conversations around this area, a lot of guys unloaded the beans this fall, and they stored a lot more corn. So I don't know if the, you know, there were a few bins in, you know, out in the countryside that were built in the last couple of years. And I I think that's part of it locally, but I think the other big part of it is, is they just stored every kernel of corn that they possibly could. And they unloaded a lot of beans. Uh, Typically you would see some, some beans lingering around on the farm. There's just not as much out there this year. Hmm. What What do you think? So to get us out of this, uh, where we're at today in the markets, what kind of things would we look for? What would be the, what kind of global or, or what kind of events would it take? I mean, we don't want to wish ill on anybody, but something's going to have to happen, right? Well, I guess the counterpoint yeah. to that, Aaron, would be, you know, it, it, you, what you've mentioned supply, and I think that's what we're alluding to now on that, yeah. but you might talk about demand as well. So, Yeah, so – you know, we've had a demand story the last couple of years. You know, that's kind of what really pushed us. That's what saved us when we when we had good crops to still have really good prices and that there was a demand for the U.S. bushel, whether it was beans, corn, there was a demand for our product. 
because um, there's some, some, some supply issues um, in, you know, the, the Black Sea. That put a big question mark on it. Uh, could it ship out? I mean, we had the bushels, but we couldn't move them. So you went to a channel that you could get them. So the reason I bring that up is, is the demand stories take a while. There's time to those. Mm. Supply for a supply story, that can be a that can be a quick flash in the frying pan type thing. And, and we usually see some sort of, oh my gosh, it's too wet, or oh my gosh, it's too dry when we're when the when the planners are rolling. And and, and that's just the market volatility. Um, we may not see 50, 60 cent run ups like we've had in the last couple of years. The 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 run ups or the uh, downfalls here lately have been more subdued you know we're, we're, we're back into those big carry not i don't want to say big carry markets but we're back into carry markets where prices fluctuate in smaller increments than where we've been in the inverted markets the last couple of years where those price swings can be severe and quick these are more subtle um, we can still get some volatile markets in that april may june time frame uh, but again i would be more talking about new crop in that time frame. Um, old crop, I would really just be, you know, in a carry market is paying you more to wait and deliver later on. Wait to deliver is the key. Do not wait to price that in that at, at when you get mm. out there. Because typically in a carry market, the deferred prices will come down to the nearby price. Because as you get closer to that, the market's going to say, well, I really don't want it right now. I'll pay you a little bit more later on. So unless you're hedging and unless you're a commercial trader like we are, it really the only way to take advantage of that is to lock something in before you get to that time frame. So wait to deliver. Don't wait to price. Exactly. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> lock it in now. Lock it in now. Good advice. Hey, what's the status of uh, we've had? It seems like we've had a lot of rain. It's not overly wet because we know we're we're running uh ammonia and doing a lot of things that that seems early uh what's your river status currently in outbound for your for your bushels you don't see hiccups right now or you do or no i i don't see any hiccups um I, I, that's and and that's what's kind of putting a lot of pressure on this too is everything's just kind of running um there's no the the hiccup is just there's just a lot of bushels out there it's not that we can't get it out. We can't move it. We, we can. It just don't need it as much. The uh, demand. So, yeah, the demand side. I mean, there there's a lot of question marks here. And and I could go way down in the weeds and talk about the Ag, Ag Outlook Forum and, and all that. And I have notes on that. But, you know, speaking of demand, you know, like corn exports, they're saying they're up $440 million. Or projected to be up 440 million to 2.1 billion bushels. Um, that's a lot, but cheaper prices help exports be more advantageous. You know, guys look at us and like, well, the price per bushel is down. Maybe we can buy some there instead of somewhere else because we've driven the price down. So, but the, at the end of the day, what this old crop looks like is that we're we're talking about a 14.9 percent ending stock used to you know stocks to use rate the previous crop we were at 9.9 you know corn anytime we get above 10 we're we're pretty comfortable i mean we're we're getting up there now and you, it's probably just a bad thing that we're talking about old crop in march march 1st isn't it when it all comes down to it because <laughs> if we're still talking about it um we just so, still got the hangover Right, they've got they got to get busy doing something else every yeah. far along. That's the that's the issue. So. Hey, yeah, and that's the fear. Um, I you know when these bushels start to let go, when is that next pressure on the market going to come? You know, when bushels don't move, the market will try to pull those bushels out. You know, and there, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Basis will get hot, or futures will run up. Um, some form of uh, those two coming together to try to pull those bushels out for the end users that need it. I, I think, you know, personally, my fear is that, boy, if you hold on to it with everybody else, when everybody else starts to flood, you do not want to be on the backside of that. You want to be on the front side of that one. Um, I'd rather be in the top <laughs> two or three deliveries than, you know, if there's only 10 people delivering, I'd rather be in the top two 
on who pulls the trigger first versus the, the latter ones. Um, and again, I'm not trying to be negative. I, 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 I like new crop. I think, um, it's still a tough story to, to talk about because we, they are subdued prices, but, um, you know, for our guys that sub- subscribe to us on the uh, uh, Bushel app and through text messages and things like that, and that, that look for local uh, market knowledge, I'm going to put a video together for some break-even prices. Um, I had Mark Steiner, one of our account managers, help me get some just ballpark uh, numbers for fertilize, chem, seed, kind of put it together and, and, and see what that picture looks like now. How many bushels is it going to take you to come out okay on this. I think that's a, uh, took us a while to get there, Aaron, but I think you just said the positive statement of, uh, of the podcast was a lot of times and I'm guilty of it too, is we think of our last, we think of our break even as some number of bushels of yield that we had five years ago. I mean, that sticks in our head, right? And that is, that is not what the, the new reality. I mean, we have proven in the Eastern corn belt that we can grow some pretty big crops on dry not uh, dry land non-irrigated land and i think that's probably the you know the positive take is that as you're putting together your your kind of uh you know what if scenarios um we've got a new number it's not the one that we used five or six years ago as far as our bushels per acre that we can produce and it's a better number and and uh that's probably our short-term tool is to, to grow the biggest crop we can grow Mm-hmm. Yep. I'll yeah, agree. and yeah, it, it, it it's going to be interesting to see how this plays plays out. Um, but you know, there's there's still a lot of unknowns. There's there's nothing to say that we couldn't see a twenty thirty cent uh, rally. But if we do, I I, I would definitely be uh, in the camp of rewarding the market for that rally. So I would be locking stuff in. I would have an itchy trigger trigger finger if that happens to play out. Um, like I said, the last couple of years, we, we've been able to kind of have great production, great prices. Um, you know, in, inputs were higher um, the last couple of years. So, but inputs are coming down now, but also corn prices and bean prices are down. Now it's just like you said, so it's just a new number um, yield wise and, and price per bushel wise. Okay. Well, we could all go home and watch Angry Beavers and probably feel a lot better about a lot of things, right? Yeah, I mean, who doesn't <laughs> want to watch that? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, hey, but, quickly, uh, I mean, you, the, alluded, the, you alluded to a, a video that might be coming out. So you might talk about your new platform and, and a new way you're going to be reaching out. A new old way, maybe. You've kind of re- yeah, reiterated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. New, new, new old way is the best way to say it. Um, for those of you that used to, you know, for the white, for the old White River days pre pre merger, now that we're all premier and and it's all rocking and rolling, um, we used to do co videos, and it, it, all it would do is that you'd you'd see a link come from come from us from Premier or White River back in the day, and you click on the link, and it and all it is is it is a video um, that I put together with kind of some local market stuff. Um, I will talk about larger picker, picture things like national news, uh, USDA reports, how trade flows kind of work or can play in our favor or, or against us. Um, but yeah, they, it, all you got to do is uh, get a hold of Jason or I or, or anybody and get it and get signed up to receive our uh, prices or just, you know, facility updates. And like I said, it it's local market news. Um, it's nothing earth shattering, but it is. But it is something different than what this podcast is. These are, you know, when you listen to our podcast, at least when I'm on, it, it, it's bigger, broader type stuff. Um, this is a little bit more honed in, closer to home, um, and some marketing tips or some watch outs for our local customers. Good. And for our listeners, you always put those in the comments or email crops at premierag.com anytime with any questions, and we'll get it to the right person for the answers. For sure. You got anything else, Aaron? Uh, the last little bit would just be, you know, we've alluded to it. it, it t- now is the time for discipline. I mean, we, we've not talked about being disciplined, but now is the time to be disciplined, uh, get those targets working. Uh, so this is definitely, definitely taking a step back into the carry markets and, and uh, 
not as fun times marketing. You have to be proactive in these types of markets. So let's just be disciplined and, and, and get some targets working. All right. Okay. Well, that wraps us up. So okay. that's Thanks, a- Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. That's another episode of The High Ground, powered by Premier Companies. And uh, if you would, like and subscribe, make comments in the right sections, and uh, we'll get back with you if you have any questions. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.